four clinics, four drug shops, and two merchandise shops found in possession of pharmaceutical products. 118 boxes of assorted drugs were impounded from the closed pharmacies, while five boxes were impounded from the clinics that were found selling uh, medicines illegally. The total value of impounded drugs is estimated at over Uganda shillings, 46 million 500,000. NDA advises all operators whose drug outlets have been closed. Thank you very much for keeping it Global TV Uganda. We welcome you to yet another episode. Mm -hmm. My name is Kusima Alvin and I'm hosting Mr. Pade Brian Magazinawa Kaima mm -hmm. who will be giving you details of news mm -hmm. as they happen here in the country, Uganda. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pade Brian, say hi to our followers. I know Zakumurundi will not guess the call of Uganda at him. Nay, Tebaga is a catip, Bazongo at Denyo, who have a chance of Funazi dollar. The Pade Brian, uh, Magazi Gawa Kaiman, Babuza, Komulimutia, Sivia Mutia, Kansovident, Molibulonji, Norwecho, and Jagala Kudamo Bagamanti, Tubebaza, Tubebaza, Nyo, Okwanga Mutu, Gobedida, No Kubanga. Uh, Mungira keto fari ku bichibia tukola Nga msharing a video za fe uh, Msubscribing Nebila la renja Yeah, thank you very much Mr. Pado Brand And I would like to remind all those Who have just joined mm. to subscribe Don't forget to subscribe And please share that link with a friend Such that we can spread the news about Global TV Uganda Chito for nyo Agamu kumaudi de agabatemu which One of uh, the big Headline headlines mm. was uh, the NDA, mm. National, National Drug Drugs Authority, Authority. Mm. impounding drugs worth 100 million shillings from Dagara. Uh, <laughs> yeah, million maker. Chikumi. Chikumi. Na yinge Dagara li no ribate two four ba. From 11 districts in Western Uganda, uh, they targeted mm. 281 drug outlets, mm. but still they were able to impound some. Mm. And these drugs, they were counterfeit, expired, leading to like health hazard of the citizen. Yeah. Now, you see, sometimes we normally question the, the, the work and integrity as well as the ethics of our um, government or government civil servants. Mm. Uh, I do believe uh, that by the time the uh, the authorities um, went and in, I mean went along with the National Drug Authority, impounded uh, these drugs worth 100 million uh, Uganda shillings. Mm. The people they targeted, the drug outlets, those that they targeted, these were not public health facilities to say that they were a government hospital, a healthy center of mm. the sort, mm. to mention that. Mm. But these were privately owned drug outlets. Mm. So as we question the integrity, the ethics of the government civil servants, the public servants, we also have to question ourselves, we as Ugandans, how on earth you as a Ugandan who went to school, now you studied medicine at a medical school of mm. any kind. It could be Mbara University, mm. uh, probably at um, Makere University, to mention but a few. And you know for sure that you had uh, uh, studies of ethics. Mm. You also uh, uh, saw the hypocrite, is it hypocritical or oath? Mm. You call it hypocritic something oath. Mm. And then you sell drugs that are of counterfeit, substandard, they are indeed expired to the citizenry. So you you are using this greed, you are covered with greed, you are using this advantage of, of owning a drug shop. Mm. A drug is meant to help the sick recover from a healthy complication. Mm. Now with you, you are selling a drug to help the sick to die. That's where we have reached as Ugandan. Are the people involved? That's like, why we have reached as Ugandans. Are the people involved educated? Like, are they doctors or nurses who have who have graduated, or they are people who 
grow up seeing their parents selling these Probably drugs and that could be business. some. But trust me, mm. many of these people must be educated because in a Uganda of today, nobody can own a drug shop if at all they don't have the academic papers in line with medicine, in line with health. Mm. So that means that the owners of these drug outlets are educated people. Even when they have the attendants that are, you know, half-baked attendants, mm. still that they go to oversee the operation, operational activities of their drug shops. Mm. They are involved in the purchase of these drugs and getting them stopped to their drug shops. Mm. So there is no way how you can exonerate them from being so evilish, greedy, and being murderers of the sort. So as we look at, we look at uh, these people buying these drugs, mm. so could there be weaknesses or something that's not uh, clear, a uh, criteria that's not clear, that is followed when purchasing these drugs? Because when you're purchasing drugs, you should be at least satisfied that this person buying these drugs, or from this person up to, from whom I'm going to get these drugs, is a satisfied is a satisfied person. Uh, could this be half-baked people trying to steal drugs or trying to buy these drugs from, uh, like give, giving corruption to doctors and nurses in government hospitals, government so facilities? It starts from drugs. the top, because I do believe that uh, importation of drugs, a drug is a product. And once imported, it goes into the similar procedures of shipping and having it uh, cleared on, uh, 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 on any entry of this country so that it can now reach the final consumer who is a Ugandan patient. So the sickness is from the top. These drugs, so labeled as counterfeit drugs, is not to say that they enter this country without them being cleared at our uh, entry borders mm. or at our borders with their entries. They are clear and these are cleared by the government officials. So government officials clear these drugs to get into market, a local market, so that they can reach the final consumer. Mm. We should somehow Excuse the government, because it's not only drugs that reach Ugandan final consumer as being substandard drugs. Mm. We also have issues to do with uh, accessories. So to speak, we have got Chinese accessories that are wanting in nature. Mm. Not to say that China produces products that are of substandard exclusively, no, but because there is a category, a, a category of a given product that is produced to poor countries of our sort. And so we import and it comes here. Mm. So someone uses a phone within a month or two, it is it, it, it has it has got its point. Mm. Or it has broken down. Come to drugs. I believe this is unbecoming. Though we can exonerate you. It is unbecoming to have substandard drugs imported into this country. What does it show of our country, of our government, of our authorities? Mm. What does it show? It shows that those that are within the Ministry of Health, especially the National Drug Authority, I do believe uh, with other partner kind of bodies, I think the Uganda National Bureau of Standards, mm. How do you get to allow this drug to be on market anyway? Okay, now that you have come out to uproot it from the market uh, for the sake of protecting the health of the citizenry, that's a good step. But step number one, do not allow it into the market if at all you have found it not of quality enough and so it does not qualify to be in the market you as uganda national bureau of standards stop this drug mm. i think would have agents of you 
and uh, uh, you, we call it Uganda National uh, Bureau, Bureau of Standards, Standard. UNBRS. Eh? We would have these agents at clear clearance points mm. of uh, um, those of, of entry of these products into our country, the imported products, mm. such that we do not fall under such kind of sickness. Indeed, mm. this is an act that must stop because if we really love our country and we love our fellow Ugandans, mm. there is no need as to why we should be selling these counterfeit drugs to our fellow Ugandans instead of curing. And again, we aim at the killing the them mm. because we need money. Mm. This is sickness. There is some uh, time back when we talked about this Ugandan eh, who went to the extent of stooping so low by selling off his toy a toy how can you sell your foot toy for god's sake how disparate have we become because we money. be just a little patient mm. i know the history of uh, prophet ayub in islam I, I i believe that is is it job in the bible job, yes. yes the one who had his riches and his wives his family and Everything at the end of it all was taken away from yeah. him. Mm. He remained, I think, with a, one wife mm. who was patient enough to keep with him. But in, but the, in, the, letter, in the letter, she missed. She also missed her. Mm. But this man could not lose hope. He could not forsake his God. Mm. Can you imagine? I think he had all what it takes. Mm. He would. He would. Uh, do anything he would have gone to witchcraft to stop this misery that mm. he was going through but he held on and at the end of the day he was eh, successful let's learn a spirit of being optimistic and also having such kind of uh, I, I call it uh, to me I call it uh, a sense of integrity mm. within us so what should be done mm. to do away with this nonsensical act, mm. like this, this, this do, these actions of uh, our health workers mm. who, are, who are probably devastated because by the time you do this, you're not feeling right. There's something wrong with the brain. That is the what mental health. Done? That mm. is the mental health, having a healthy worker uh, attending to the patients, yet they, they themselves need health care. Calls attention yes. because by the time you are a house worker, so to speak, that you have a drug shop mm. that sells drugs meant to save a life, mm. yet what you have as a drug is a drug that kills life and you sell it, then you are sick in the head. So, what should the authorities do to avert this, to curb this? Because trust me, it has not started. Day. It did not start yesterday, and I don't think that the National Drugs Authority came at the right time. For me, what uh, I, I can say is that uh, these attendants and owners of drug outlets of such kind, mm. we cannot really defer them from murderers. Mm. They are murderers. Mm. We've seen a number of people having cancerous issues. Mm. So you sell a counterfeit drug to kill somebody slowly by acquiring cancer, by, you know, putting poison into their bodies. Mm. You are murderers. So these murderers would better be brought to book and being charged of murder. Mm. If any of them is charged of murder, perhaps it would create fear. It could could create, uh, you know, that um, block or blockage for others not to commit the same. With this education system of ours, you go ahead to study medicine and mm. whichever course. In the, Wasting time. In the health in the health. Not all of them, mm. but for some other people, uh, they are wasting time. I think. We are not this country that is well endowed to have our citizens and children go in for courses that they are indeed within them. They are that courses that are within this person. Mm. Instead, we are a people that go for the courses just because we want to use this course to get a job. Mm. You go in for medicine. You go in for being this a health worker, 
yet in you you are a mother you are not indeed a horse worker mm. you go uh, indeed uh, to being you know um for example a priest mm. yet in you you are a rapist so i mean there the, the are things that really don't add up we are not having our citizenry our generation heading in for the occupations and professions that are indeed within their blood mm. they just go in for these professions to get a job thank that you very much mr padebran thank you very much mr padebran in my last words to the healthy workers wherever you are mm. don't take these oaths you take for granted mm. after your course you take an oath to always support the government through mm. like attending to these worker to these to patients, patients very well But saving again, a patient even at again at, at the yes. cost of their life again you pl- you play to the contrary mm. you always need to play a allegiance to mm. these oaths mm. don't take them, don't take them for granted